So welcome to podcast number nine of the Women in Leadership Journeys to Success with Leonique from Aon. Um, we're going to do some introductions from ourselves. We're going to talk about her journey, how she got to where she is today, um, and as well as being a CEO, looking at the overall business, what are the changes and impacts she's implemented, what are the biggest lessons that she's learned, uh, and how difficult it is to look over a whole holistic view of a business. Um, challenges that she's seen and changes throughout the industry as she's got to where she is, her main drivers, the struggles with hiring diversity in leadership positions as well as more junior positions, and what we can do more of in order to influence people to get into that. So I'll kick us off. So I'm Anna, I work at Interquest as a managing consultant here in Amsterdam. So I lead on their risk regulation and compliance practice across financial services, which covers it in its whole aspect. So I'm Leonique van Houwelingen. Um, I'm the CEO of Aon the Netherlands. Um, since the 1st of November last year, so it's not that long um, yet. Um, been in the finance industry for almost 29 years. Um, I will come to that uh, later on, but um, yeah, Aon is, is, is one of the largest what they would call brokers um, in uh, risk capital. So think about you know anything around um, insurances for uh, for any any damage you can think of, uh, just damages by cars, by uh, houses, but also big big, um, big corporates that run their business, um, or maybe in the food industry, or you know an export, a marine. Anything you can think of is um, something that we uh, we look after, and we bring parties together to uh, to combine the risks and and diversify the risk among the underwriters. So we are broken, not an insurance company. There's a lot of mix mixing up there, <laughs> and I think a lot of a lot of big part is also human capital, and human capital is really about employee benefits, income, yeah. uh, sick sick leaves, etc. Uh, where we are a big uh, broker and and consultant too. So it's a very diverse business, and maybe we come to talk it. But I think the uh, the mission today is really talk about leadership and uh, yeah, my journey. Yeah, no, exactly. And as we, where you was at ABN AMRO, you was at Bank yeah. New York Mellon, you've been at Missouri and now Aon, there's slight changes in the industries there from where yeah. you would have focused in BNY most recently uh, and Aon as a brokerage. Yeah. What was the biggest changes you saw? Um, look, I mean, the challenges, there's, l let me start with what is actually quite similar. Um, of course, they're two different industries. One, one is really focused on risk management. The other is really on um, more being that kind of uh, uh, business partner for big institutional investors to make sure they can invest in each and every country and that it's a smooth process and that you know it is also contributing to the wealth of the world. Um, I think that's also for Aon with a slight difference where um, this is really about uh, corporates, um, financial institutions to be able to do what they need to do and also to manage their risks appropriately. So I think it is two financial industry elements. If there are similarities on operational efficiencies, there are similarities on client experience, mm -hmm. um, there are similarities start to become more and more regulations, uh, even though I think the banking industry is much heavier regulated than yes. Aon at the moment, so there's a big difference. Um, but I, it's also about culture. And uh, I see similarities in, you know, in, in es establishing that cult culture, making sure that you are an employer of choice, that you attract the right talent, and that you can do what, what, your, what your purpose in life is actually, um, and continue to do that, and be that big contributor to, you know, to being successful in the world for corporates and financial institutions. Yeah, and you mentioned two things there which stood out to me yeah. as the cultural side and yeah. the talent um, attraction area. Yeah. What do you mean by those two things? Because they can mean a multitude of different things yeah. to so many different people. Yeah, I think the culture, culture for me is really around creating an environment where people feel, feel safe and can bring their whole selves to the to, to that company, right? And mm -hmm. culture is also about values and what you want to be and how you want to come across. Um, culture is is massively important, even though it is a very much a container meaning, right? You think it's yeah. big. It's a very big topic, um, and culture doesn't mean necessarily one one set of rules or values that determine and define culture. Culture, I think, to me, is more a sum up yeah. of different cultures, different backgrounds, but with an overriding principle and, and value that it contributes to, you know, to the well-being of people, that it can bring their whole, se whole, se whole self and be successful. Um, I've seen examples of cultures where 
um, when you know fear starts to kick in, that is devastating for culture, is devastating for business. Um, so it is for me really about establishing an environment where people feel you know safe and comfortable. Yeah, I think that's the biggest topic you ever hear at the moment. It's yes. people trying to a implement a culture, yeah. follow a culture, but add values into a business where yeah. people can actually be on board with it. Because yeah. it's all well and good saying this is our culture, these are our values. But if no one embeds it and the leadership and management don't drive it, there isn't really a culture and you don't really have very many values. And quite a lot of people kind of mismatch that and really forget to identify what that means to different individuals. Obviously, you've been in a lot of leadership positions as you've you've gone through through your career. Where would you say the biggest challenge was when trying to embed that and, and kind of guide because you must have managed so many different cultures, so many different people, so many different ethnicities, which all bring cultural balances yeah. around how their values are applied. How would you manage that? So it is it is a challenge. Um, I've, I've run international teams. Um, I've been CEO of a banking institution based in Brussels. And um, funny enough, if you think about the, the difference in culture between the Netherlands and Belgium, it's quite big. Yes. <laughs> and um, uh, as it is also with Germany, and we're neighbors, right? We're countries that are very close to each other. Um, but I think that if you um, have, do not have an open mind, and if you just walk in assuming that you're going to bring a lot and that you, you, know, you know how it works, and maybe a little bit of a fixed mindset that you occasionally see here and there, yeah. um, is, that is that is absolutely not the right way to do it in terms of you want to create <laughs> no. an open culture. And I've made some mistakes myself when I um, uh, joined uh, the team in Belgium. Um, I felt like, you know, let's cooperate or um, we're, we're going to be set, super uh, successful as a team and I want everybody to take its own responsibilities. Whereas maybe the Belgian culture does have a, a little bit of a hierarchy. And, um, and I needed to discover that, uh, to find out, okay, this is the way it works. Um, but I was also not very transparent and was out what I was expecting. So yeah. it came down to trust. And you first need to build trust no matter where you are. And that is not that is not something that is specific for a certain country. Trust is everywhere one of the bases for a good culture. So um, for me to make sure that the team was successful, it meant that we I had to sit down and build that trust with each and every individual. And then when you do have that trust, trust and confidence that things will be amongst us and we know you know we know each other a bit vulnerability and get to know each other a bit more than only you know on the business side um, that creates a basis for the right culture and you're absolutely right it's all about the tone of the top right if you don't uh, show people that you do have um, as a team uh, fun trust each other uh, energy and passion, then people won't feel it. No. Um, and so it, it is, it's very much at the top. And if you establish values, live up to them. Yeah. And, you know, and, and I know there is, there is a, sometimes a difference in how you, you look at certain values. Um, I know that within Beyond Manor, we talked about, you know, we challenge each other, you know, get out of your comfort zone. For some, that would mean like, you know, for the Dutch people, oh, fantastic, I'm direct, I can tell you, yeah. you know, I, I, will, I, will, I will tell you what I think. Uh, in other cultures, it means like, oh, man, yeah. I, I, do I need to challenge you? You're my boss. I'm not sure I feel comfortable in doing that. Mm-hmm. So it's also about guiding principles and explaining what you expect. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's no perfect world. There's also yeah. probably not going to be a perf- perfect culture. But I think the wealth of working in international environments where you have that luxury of all these different backgrounds, it just sets you up for success if you um, make the most out of it. Um, and it's, it's, it, it, it works because I've worked in international environments where you have very, very different people. Um, but if you communicate and listen well, you know, that's where um, it started and, and people people get come with you. Yeah, I think communication, listening, yeah. trust, vulnerability yes. are four of the k- most critical aspects when joining any type of international organisation which will either see it succeed or fail. Yeah. And you mentioned in there, like, you would have made some mistakes and I think it's really important to highlight people do make mistakes yes. at whatever level you're at. Yeah. Everyone has failures, everyone has weaknesses, everyone has strengths, but it's whether you look at a failure and go, okay, I failed. 
yeah. that's me done, I'm staying here. Or, okay, I failed, that didn't work, let's go right. Yeah. We couldn't go left, let's go right, how do we go into the middle? And it's that sort of navigation, yeah. but also just saying, okay, right, well, this didn't work, and just having that communica communicative way of working so that they can see you're a normal person. Yes. You're leading from the front, but leading with visibility yeah. of where the direction of the business is going, which brings me on to my next topic of taking over a CEO role, you hold the responsibility of the entire business. Yes. And that's not looking at it from just IT or risk or product, it's everything. Yes. What were the biggest changes you've had to embed into a business, whether that be from an employee perspective or an entire yeah. business direction? Uh, and what challenges came with that? So looking back at my career so far, um, I think I could say that I'm pretty much of a change manager. Um, so, and I do believe in every stage of a firm is you need a different leader. I mean, if it's um, uh, if if you need, really need to go through transformation, yes. you need somebody who can who can act on change and is not afraid to make some changes. Um, so I've been doing that for a number of times now, and. Every time I have to do that, um, it is uh, an, it is it is a massive st massive task. I think the biggest challenge is always to get people along in the change. So one of the changes I had to um, implement is um, a complete new governance structure in the bank that I was running at the time, and that was um, just enforced by the regulators. Um, you know, Brexit was adding to that, and it was a very sensitive topic, as you know, you probably oh, yes. guess. <laughs> and so, we, many yeah, names. and and look, I mean, let's face it, the UK has always played a very important role in EMEA environments, right? Where head offices for EMEA was always kind of based in London, and then to figure find out that you can't do everything for London anymore because of the licensing issues, because of all the borders that were put in place, and then you need to navigate through that sensitivity on basically telling people that their job was going to change because everything had to move, mm -hmm. at least for the European clients to the European bank in Brussels. So, And then to have to explain it to our stakeholders in the US that were looking at this like, what is happening? It's only adding costs to the system because now I have to do two treasury centers, two risk management organizations. I can't you know, make use of a center, um, uh, one for EMEA. And that change, and also to have to comply with, you know, the pressure from 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 the regulator was a massive change for for the organisation. Yeah. And um, I think it was one of my hardest, um, especially also because you know it's easy to, to make change for the better, uh, change where you could see the added value, you know, like increasing margins, uh, growth uh, in revenues, um, um, hiring better better people, talented people. Um, this was a change that was in, was kind of a political change that was not very much adding to the to the bottom line. No. Um, so that was that was a very difficult one where stakeholder management. I became an expert in this, <laughs> whether whether I wanted it or not. Um, keep employees happy. Um, you know, there was a lot of insecurity around. You know, how to travel and can I live where? Can I live? Where's how's my job going to change? Yeah. Will I use lose my job? Um, but also your your you know the the, the, the corporate in, in New York that didn't understand a clue what was happening and also didn't understand the political sentiment. They did in the end, but I think it was not foreseen that it was so impactful. No. I don't think anyone really knew how impactful any of that would be. No. But when you're leading change for a better vision, yeah. there's a lot that comes into that. Yeah. But for you, it's the employees, it's the management team, but then it's a supervisory board and yeah. it's a CEO. So how, what different levels of leadership and management styles get used throughout each of these different levels? Yeah, it is. It, I think it is for um, uh, if I would start as kind of the what I would call the shareholder because the, 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 this was a, the, you know the subsidiary of the group at the group level. Um, I just need to explain over and over and over again, factual, um, not beating around the bush. Don't make it more beautiful than it is. Just bring the message. And sometimes that meant that people were really upset. And it was felt that I was implementing the change, like you know, I was doing it to them. Uh, but then you need to say, like, I mean, this is this is regulations, and it also meant that I had to bring people in front of the the European Central Bank to hear it from the horse's mouth. Mm -hmm. um, so you need to feel, you know, when that's that's something that you should should do. Um, 
I think the other part is uh, you supervise your board if there's big change. And I think a lot of, you know, the good news is a lot of companies, a lot of banks, uh, a lot of financial institutions were going through the same emotions through the same exercise, right? I mean, Brexit was impacting the whole financial industry. So the, <clears throat> at the level of the, um, of the board with the, um, uh, super, let's say the supervisory board, there was just more um, understanding and, and, and also more uh, appreciation of all the challenges because everybody's living it yeah. at the same moment. And if it's then really good to have representation from the UK and from Europe in your board, but also from the group. So we had some advocates from the group in the in a board that also could um, tell the story um, in, in in the US. So I think that is that is that is a different style. That's a different way of uh, explaining. Um, but you need at all times make sure that you're that that in those circumstances your facts are straight and that you um, share information in time that you. Um, show leadership towards all those stakeholders, including, of course, also regulators, and that you uh, make sure that everybody gets their role to play. Because if you if you do it on your own, it's it's, it's never going to work. Similar. You're only as strong as your team is, and only as strong also in this case as your board is. I think on the employee side, that is more like being you know part of of the of that side. Look, you know, show your human face, be more empathetic. Um, try to explain what's going on because a lot, the governance was a, a big move and you know if you take if you have people that need to change in terms of where they report to etc etc it is it's impactful yeah and so you need to bring some comfort um, around that change I'm not saying that I was successful in each and every stage of it um, you come across bumps and sometimes you you get too much um, into it yourself, like you know, you know, all the time I have to say, okay, no, no, step back, helicopter view, don't make it personal. Um, it is it is a business uh, event or a political event, whatever you want to call it, and we just have to do it. But I think in the end we we we, we succeeded, um, and that was one of the changes that to me was um, you know a difficult one in my career. And again. It, it happened to the whole industry, so I think everybody had a bit of that same emotion, same sentiment. Yeah. Um, so that made it, you know, more acceptable and, and and easier to bear. On the other hand, I think it was just a lot of put a lot of pressure on me to to get everybody along. Mm. And how would you say you managed to get everyone to to follow that, even from the employee side, like juniors and, and medias and bringing people on that journey with you because I think change it brings two sets of people yeah people that love change yeah. and really like to identify new ways of working and new yeah. ways of being and people that are just almost allergic to it yeah. the word change makes them want to hide and stuff like that which it does have its benefits but then it's almost that little bit extra kind yeah. of helping scoop them along and the word uh, well the sentence of you're only as powerful as your team it rings a lot of bells yeah. because I think so many people sometimes see a CEO of they're over here in their happy tower and you know yeah. we're down here doing everything whereas when they see them actually getting involved and they bring that empathetic yeah. side of look I have to make this change here's the reasons why here's how it's going to impact the business here how it's going to further the business and somebody really gets stuck in and takes the time yeah to actually provide them with the information needed and that we're all on board brings, a, well, it, it holds a lot of credibility, yeah. to be honest, um, from everybody. Yeah. Um, looking at the challenges and obviously the changes that you've done, what would you say were your core drivers that kind of kept you going during that time? It's definitely people. I mean, it's, it, if you, if you uh, are happy enough to work with a team that is um, really, with you and want to work with you and has almost kind of this friendship type of uh, approach so that is that is a big support right if um because i what i've learned over the last 20 28 29 years is that um what doesn't kill you kill you makes you stronger right <laughs> yeah. and so if it's if, as a team you have to go through because it's not only me as a team you have to go through all those changes that brings a lot of camaraderie mm -hmm. Because you feel you're, you know, you're not on your own. You go through it, 
And that makes you very strong and very powerful as a team. And that I think is also the, the, the reason for success. You know, if you, if you have that same view, with, and, and I, I shouldn't say all those in the same direction because we know what happened to AB and Emra, but um, it's, <laughs> uh, it's, so in, that's not what I mean. And having diverse views, but yeah. in the end, agreement on the direction that we need to go into is super powerful. Once everybody's convinced this is the right way to do it, then you do have that uh, team effort and that that's brings a lot of energy. So for me, that's an absolute necessity. That's one of the core things. H- have that common understanding within your team, not being afraid to challenge each other, but do that in an environment where people do feel that they can do it, right? I mean, so that um, uh, everybody contributes and to a certain extent in equal proportions because as a CEO, never think you have all the power and authority to decide things you are basically the one that glues the team together and you're the one that is, to the outside world, the leader. But in your team, I always see this as equal efforts. Yeah. Um, so for me, that is um, uh, the way, anyway, that's the way I work with a team. Um, and it also then resonates with your colleagues um, and your employees um, that can see that team effort. Um, and, you know, and. What I find, another one is super key, is that you are visible and that you do communicate and that you do also, to the point that we came back to, is that you sometimes also can say, I don't know. I mean, yeah. it's, you know. Um, and look, I mean, from it, 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 what is, when I left, you know, you, you always move on. And um, so the last time was from moving from being my melon ultimately to Aeon. When I left my previous um, employer, the number of messages um, and how people appreciated working with me and people that I didn't even know. Um, I didn't shed any, any tear leaving Beyond Mellon, but I did <laughs> shed some tears on the, on the super, super sweet messages. Yeah. And you don't realize, and it's actually quite good not to realize it, that you, you know, some people see as a role model or some people, you know, as the leader that they, they want to, you know, they want to work with. That is super, super nice. And um, they think, you know, if I've made some changes to some people's lives and, you know, and made You're them believe make in themselves, everybody's. that's it. That's worth it. Huh? That's yeah. ultimately your legacy. That is. And being able to come out of a business and have that amount of messages, yeah. Yeah. it does make you look back and think, even if you didn't realize it, you're really making a change yeah. to some people's lives and you're yeah. actually really empowering people you may never have heard of, yeah. but they're seeing you lead by example. And to be able to be that role model, it, it holds a lot of value. Yes, absolutely. And I think with what you said as well around, and this is something I really like, is having diverse views and actually emphasizing that within a team. Yeah. Because if we just use one person's thought process, we're only going to get here. Yeah. If we use everyone else's thought processes, as you say, you can sit there and say, okay, I don't know this. Yeah. And someone else or two, three other people have really good ideas, glue them together, come to an agreement. Yeah. You're going to go from good to great. Yeah. And that's only going to see it excel, but utilize the people's knowledge around you on specific subject areas, as well as your own, it's, it, it is gluing it all together absolutely. to build build a house. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I'm able to give you an, an, a nice example. Um, I joined uh, Aeon 1st of November, and then you get kind of parachuted into a team, right? Yeah. And with all, you know, all the legacies and all the problems and all the challenges, but also on, you know, their history, uh, of course. Um, and then it, it just takes a while before you understand the individual's motivation and how they cooperate. Um, and one of the things that I did and I never regret it is I asked everybody to take out a leadership assessment not for their own personal, well, you could always take some personal um, um, uh, lessons, but this was more about how do we fit in as a team? So how are, where are our competencies? Where do we may have some gaps that we need to work in? And what types of people do we have in the team? Is that red? Uh, yeah, blue, that's yeah. some blue, but also, <laughs> but, it, but it was more also about, you know, is this a team that is speaking up? And, uh, do we challenge each other? Um, is maybe too um, too much aggressive, you know, moving forward or, um, you know, okay, let's move on, you know, like those things. It was funny because uh, when we got, um, uh, we had an, an offsite with um, uh, the team that was leading this effort. And it was just so funny to see where people sat on, you know, on the, on the, on the extremes and on the, on the colors. And, and, and now we're so aware of, 
our gaps as a team because we all want to move forward. Mm -hmm. And there's only one person that says, no, 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 you know, let's first look at it. So we need to be very mindful that we don't overrule or overwhelm our, the only individual in the team that may be a bit more blue <laughs> yeah. and say, let's sit a bit back. Yeah. But it's also very good for me, like, you know, for future exercises on if you want to complement a team with more individuals or different roles, that you do look at this the is diversity. Who we've got, yeah. This is who we've got less of. Yes. Maybe if we add someone in the middle, yeah. we'll have a bit more of a diverse yeah. balance. Um, and I suppose when looking at it from a leadership team, predominantly, as, as we all know, statistics are heavily male-focused yeah. across the industry. When you hire, uh, and you've been in a leadership team for some time as a CEO and also an Aeon, how have you seen or found hiring diversity when looking for people? Yeah, it's it's. there's a big difference between my previous life and my current life. Um, and I'm not sure whether that is because my previous life was a very international business um, where you come across different nationalities, but a lot of women as well, but from very different countries. And those teams aren't huge, right? I mean, and maybe therefore it's easier to have diversity because... Uh, the people that are uh, um, in the team are already at a certain level and are yeah. motivated and, you know, they want to work uh, full time. And so I had more diverse teams in the past. Uh, my previous board was 50-50. And now, um, being back in the Netherlands, uh, <laughs> it is a bit more challenging. Yes, it is. And the industry uh, that I'm in right now is also a little bit male-dominated. Um, so it is a bit of a traditional industry. I think it is changing, but I am finding it hard to um, to find women that do have that ambition to, to be in leadership positions. It's not in, let, I need to rephrase that a little, because if I look at the, um, at the population in Aeon, uh, in the Netherlands, um, there were uh, 2,600 people. It's in the biggest, you know, 50-50 overall slightly like 46 and 54, almost 50-50. But when you go up in the chain, mm. at this level, just below um, the, 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 the management team, um, only 14%. Wow. So you lose women in the way up. And also, there's different roles. So I do not believe in quick fixes. Um, it is a longer term journey that we need to go through. So what I'm doing right now is sit down with uh, the women that are just below that level, the 14%, to kind of create a talent pool with them, them themselves, themselves, so they can bring in candidates and they can say, listen, I mean, let's, let's talk what we can do so that we can move people up in positions and so that we can create a bigger pool of potential success for the MT team. So that's one of the initiatives I've, I'm undertaking right now. I also look very hard for uh, um, a woman to fill in the CCO position, so the Chief Commercial uh, Officer. Super difficult. Yes, it is. We've been working with so many c clients at the yeah. moment who are looking and emphasize we would like to bring some diversity yeah. in, i.e. we want women to join the business yeah. at, at senior levels. In the commercial side, I don't know if it's just because it's so aggressive or sales or yeah. what kind of falls off but you mentioned there it's 50 50 then it goes to 14 on the way up why do you think it kind of starts dropping off on the way up to the top um i, I haven't completely figured it out i do believe it is um it's it, it's it's probably a couple of things it's probably also sometimes a bit lack of ambition the, and, and there and it's very general that in, in, in generalities that i'm speaking right now but the, the dutch population is quite happy one and a half times model middle income right yeah. so it's um and if you know there are things like daycare is super expensive um it's not like it's been very liberal huh uh, it's it's still a bit conservative mm. um things are changing but again it takes time um so it's also about just pushing women to work full time and you can do more yeah. and be more ambitious I think it's also unconscious bias, for sure. Yeah. Um, and there's still this perception with men that you know, you know, um, 
but yeah, it takes for women much more, blah, blah, blah. It's a decision. It is a bit conservative. It is a, it is a, a, a man's business, so that needs change, and it, it is changing. Um, but I think those are kind of a combination of a couple of things. And it's also women do always wonder whether they can do it. You know, it's just, it's Venus and Mars. And, and I never actually accepted that uh, to be the case, but it's, it is to a certain, to a large extent, it's true. It's, yeah. you know, it's always, need, you need to kind of reconfirm and over and over again say, listen, you can do it. Uh, take it, take, take the chance. It's not a risk. It's, it's a, well, if you think it's a risk, is it, it's worth taking the yeah. risk. Um, and men just are more confident. And look, I mean, it's, 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 it comes with, how we raise our kids, um, it's still the belief that the men are the hunters and the women are, you know, having to take care. We still give little dolls to kid, li little girls and, and, and Lego, Lego and, and cars to boys. So it is, it's still, you know, very much from the start of our youth. And I think that's also where we need to embed changes in, in education. It is, Encouraging women to take more on, you know, tech roles and and go to universe technical universities to kind of find more of a balance because the only way to make, really make a change is when you look at, um, you know, it's equal chances for women and for and for and it really equity and, and, and equality. Yeah, I think that's a really good point as well. Is take a risk and I always think what's life without a bit of risk yeah. and if you ask my mum I probably like risk too much <laughs> <laughs> my mother would say that no. yeah yeah I've, I've pushed you too much you're not taking care of me now yeah she's like are you sure <laughs> you gotta try it once yeah. but what if you die <laughs> um so I always I, I've always said and I said this a couple years back if I'm ever inside my comfort zone I'll leave um, probably one of the best and worst things I've ever said. <laughs> best because I haven't been in it since and worst because I haven't been in it since. <laughs> but I think, I think that's brought a lot of lessons. Yeah. I think it helps you grow as a person quite a lot. And I have probably learned and took on board a lot more than I ever would have done should I have stayed in my comfort zone. Yeah. Um, I definitely wouldn't have moved to the Netherlands <laughs> yeah. uh, or done any of that. And I think that also rings bells when it, you say you know can you do both child care can you have this can you have yeah. that and I think it's around also following your mindset of I didn't want to believe this and I'm going to keep doing it yeah. and it's not Venus and Mars it's me and I'm going to yeah. make it happen and I think it's just around people actually seeing no this is doable yeah exhibit a yeah. <laughs> um how you would do it but also just understand it's not sunshine and roses yeah. there are some really hard decisions and there's some really challenging times that lay in each and every successful person's path. But it's just how you kind of look at them, as you say, kind of take a step back. It's not personal, yeah. it's business. Yeah. And then look at how you can overcome it in, in a sufficient way yeah. and move on. Absolutely. Because I feel like failure these days isn't something which is so much frowned upon. It's actually looked at as a positive of, yeah. okay, that's failed, what have you learned? How are we gonna move forwards? Yeah. Uh, and like you said with your CCO role or, or the board positions it's and it, I find it really admirable that you're looking at the team a little bit further down of ladies and how can we all get together how can I help you get up to the management team and putting small things like that into place just helps with the growth and belief uh, and kind of le leadership yeah. ladder to women actually being able to come up and, and be a part of it not just from a HR position but from a CCO yeah. or from a CTO and a CEO, it, it is possible. So I suppose if you was to really wind back and look at yourself at the very beginning of your career and, and kind of put your mind into someone who would be starting out all the changes that you've made throughout your career to get to where you are, what would your words of encouragement be to yourself back then or to other people starting out as, as where you were um, to keep them going and kind of just emphasize that this is possible? Yeah, just I think one of the, if I would advise myself them back in the days is don't let yourself disencouraged by just individuals making statements. I mean, I was, my first application was with a law firm, I won't mention the name, um, very male environment. Um, I had done an internship and they asked me to apply for a role, for a job. and. Um, it was a very unpleasant conversation and I then had a conversation with the only 
female partner and basically what she was saying and maybe it was a joke and I didn't get the sense of humor at the time but I sensed there was more to it and there's always a truth in a joke and so she said look no kids no partner no social life and I'm like okay and then I was disencouraged to go into yeah. you know to work for a law firm which is stupid you know it's just one individual but it was so it was so um telling um especially for that role that I just say you know no no I'm not going to do it um, but and, 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 and I had a few more examples, but I, I think it is real, just follow your gut feel, follow your ambition. It, there's nothing wrong with the word ambition. I was, no. I come from the time people say ambitious, Ew, that's a dirty word. Why? Why can't I have ambition? It's, um, and, and, and also get out of your comfort zone. You know, it's, it's, the world is great and there's so much out there and, you need to look around, take your time, and you may not feel, you know, at your best in your first role, um, but then there will be other roles. And um, and invest, invest in yourself, and invest in, in 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 what you like to get out of life. You know, sometimes I had a feeling, I have a feeling with the, this generation that they say every, everything needs to be great, everything needs to be nice, every single day, every hour of the day. Well, keep on dreaming. Yeah, yeah, that's, as you said that's as well. A dream world. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, it is also the difficulty in attracted talent because nowadays, it's, you know, if you look at the young talent, everybody wants to be super important already from day one and that needs time. You need to invest before you get the return on investment. And be a bit patient. I'm impatient by nature, by the way, huh? but you need a bit of patience before you get to where you want to be. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, it's super. I mean, I enjoy every single day I've never regretted anything I had a great career with BOML and I love the company to work for I'm now with Aon which is another great company never thought it would be like this I mean I didn't know them that well so that's that's already an example of you know there's so much out there yeah. and um, you want it so uh, take take them take the moment Exactly. And like coming from BMY to here you've been here for 7 months and you already feel quite settled in like you really yeah. understand what's going on but on day 1 you're not going to land and say I know everything i have to know everything i can't pretend i don't i can't say i don't know because that's not realistic no. every role you step into day one you're going to know nothing you understand business changes but you don't know the business and i think it's around accepting you're not going to be 100 percent on day one and you're probably not going to be 100 percent every single day after that there'll be some 50 some 20 some 70 yeah. percent and it's how you invest in yourself yeah. in kind of getting your priorities in line, really understanding the business, getting to understand what all these changes mean and how you're going to do it is what's going to kind of help you along the way and also see how people more and more buy on board to yeah. that because it's, it's showing the vulnerability, as you said at the very beginning, of what that brings yeah. and what that entails and getting to where you are today, it, it brings that yeah. at each and every stage. And it's, it's an unbelievably, um, uh, how do you say that, um, gift that I can do what I'm doing. And I know that you, you're, you know, you're part of the success yourself, um, but sometimes you need a bit of luck. And, yeah. and I think one other important part is also that you have the right sponsors around you. Um, you need to, to also not only invest in, in your environment, but also in the people that can help you be successful. Um, so you need to network, you need to do, you know, internal network is as important as external networking. It is uh, exposing yourself, sometimes I'm very uncomfortable, right? I mean, if you have to stand up in front of 600 people about a topic that you don't really understand, but you have to do it. I mean, and, and, and because people expect you to talk about it. So of your fingers crossed. Yeah, no fingers crossed. Oh, no. <laughs> and, you know, and, um, and, and you will see that in due course, you also find ways to kind of circumvent sometimes a question yeah. um, and <laughs> just go around. hardly an answer to it um, but that's how it works <laughs> and and it needs time to find out that um, if you talk for an audience for example that 30% is switched off already because they're so busy with their phones and 30% are thinking about all the things they have to do and actually can they afford a time to be there and maybe only 30% is really interested in what your message is and those are the ones that to, to be mindful of because those can ask there'll be difficult questions yeah. but it is you know you get to places where you otherwise would not be you, you get to talk about stuff that you would otherwise not be talking about no. and it's enriching your life because you're surrounded by people with different backgrounds cultures it is definitely a gift.
I always say the more people you know and the more people you learn from, the better you grow. Yeah. So I am a massive advocate for external mentors, yeah. internal mentors, sitting down with people at levels to understand what their day-to-day role looks like, educational courses. I really emphasize the importance of trying to keep learning. Yeah. And I think that even sits at your, your level Absolutely, where you're doing every single day. Yeah. Where you're looking for the sponsors, you're using your external network, you're consistently putting yourself in positions you probably don't feel comfortable in because you're still learning, you're still investing in yourself because you, you still want to and there's still a need there. So even as a graduate, you have a manager and you have a mentor. As a CEO, you you still have exactly the same. You're absolutely right. And yeah. that's where it sits with the investment in yourself in order to get there. But that doesn't stop at a graduate. It's nice to see it kind of keeps going up, and it's something which I really enjoy myself personally yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's if you don't don't think that way, you become. Yeah, you may, may become a little bit more complacent. You get a fixed yeah. mindset, um, and. And we've seen too many examples in uh, in the industry where people can really do harm yes. to companies if they have that fixed mindset. <laughs> um, so you know, I learn every day, and um, and you know, the other part that I think is super important, and that's the the sense of humor and fun. Oh yeah, if you sit there and just have a, a face and you can't make a joke or have a little bit of humor, yeah. They just kind of look at you as a robot and it's a yes or a no and a fax and all of this. To be able to have that little bit of humor and personal connection yeah. with people, yeah. it adds a lot and actually it builds a lot of relationships because then it could be, oh, you know, how was the kid's birthday on this day? And, yeah. oh, I saw this online, look at it, it's funny. Yeah. And it it's showing the human side of it, yeah. and which is what people buy into. Absolutely, and intense discussions it will it brings so much air if you just can make a little joke or something yeah. you know like lighten up a little yeah. and people become like you know you see them like Whew. okay uh, yeah a little bit of breathing uh, time so yeah no fun for me is is super important because um you know i've have a team right now we make a lot of jokes and uh, we do a lot of business we work hard um but that fun part makes it bearable yeah. um it gets you through the day yeah, I think without it, and it's like with me and COVID, I hate working from home. I'm a people person and I like separation. I yeah. used to sit there and think of any excuse I could just so I can go to the office, yeah. slip me in the office. <laughs> um, but it's being able just to look up and say, oh, you know, how's this? How's that? Where is this? How's your weekend been? That human interaction side of it gets things done quicker. You're not just someone asking for something on Teams or Slack and they think, oh, she just wants something else again. Um, they get to really understand you and then they really enjoy working with you and you tend to get a lot more from people when you have that buy-in. Yeah, yeah, and it was a tough time, to, to be honest. I mean, um, and, and I guess you're the extrovert, I'm the extrovert. For us just to kind of sit behind a screen and not being able to use your whole body language and, 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 yeah, and just look at yourself the whole freaking day. That was... <laughs> that is... That what I found it super tough. So did I. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was as soon as I could meet people, it's, hi, I remember my boss, he was in Manchester at the time. He came down, I hadn't seen anyone for six months. And I think I just chewed his ear off for about an hour. He was thinking, God, I can tell you haven't seen anyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was hard. It was really tough. Yeah. But then it's also circumnavigating a business through that, of how do you keep people motivated yeah. on teams? How do you keep the business going? Yeah. We um, uh, we really were very 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 mindful of that uh, because we knew that people, especially people that were just surrounded by little kids uh, in small houses or people alone, um, those were the most vulnerable ones going having to go through it. I mean, I've you know I my kids are much older. I had my my own uh, office in the house, so um, I just found it a bit boring just to have you know be there every single day. But I, I recognize that I wasn't the one that was had to complain because there were so many more people that really suffered from it. So what we in, um, introduced is a kind of body body uh, calls where we um, we introduced um, the concept that all of the exec members had to take out or had to identify a number of people in different locations throughout Europe um, to in, to in, to have a coffee um, every week, like half an hour, um, just to check in. 
and um, and those people still reach out to me. It's still a team that I have my own six, and we continued even after after COVID <laughs> because we enjoyed Keep it so much. Out. But there were there were sometimes very intense uh, discussions. People feeling very very uh, depressed. And um, so you you need to, to really, really invest in it. But I felt it was so um, uh, rewarding to do that. Um, as I said, still, still uh, gets here and there messages from the people that I was in the buddy uh, call with. And uh, we, um, you know, we just kept going for a while. And it, it, it's not, you know, it's not that it was the solution. I think the other thing that we try to do is communicate a lot. So have tunnels in, in, in locations and only talk about, you know, how do we feel and so that more people could join. Um, and um, and also sometimes take a step back because um, what I did ask for my team members with the one-on-ones, just walk out, let's t- take a walk, a virtual walk. Um, so you get some exercise and, you know. Yeah, and, fresh air. Yeah, fresh air. Uh, and then see, you know, the surroundings, where are you? Um, and, yeah, and of course, all the funny things, right? I've seen so many cats and so many dogs and so <laughs> many, dogs uh, yeah, to. and little kids and <laughs> yeah. yeah, and grandmas or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> whoever's in the house at the yeah. time. Yeah. Um, well, look, just to kind of round this off yeah. and, and start kind of lo- ending it. Yes. Um, what would your final words of encouragement be, or kind of an extra emphasis on, on putting this forwards to female talent yeah. and also other people in the industry? So again, I think it's it's all about um, following your 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 ambition, your gut feeling. Um, it is very rewarding. It's enriching your life. Um, it makes you, as a person, um, much how do you say that? Much richer because you have a wealth. You get a wealth yeah. experience. You get to meet so many people. And I'm not even talking about you. Don't hear me talk about content, right? It's really more about the experience. Yeah. So. You just miss out if you don't undertake this. <laughs> and we need all the people in the industry because there is so much, such a big lack of talent. Um, and not only about talent, it's also about people that just want to have a job. You know, th- push it and, 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 and try it, at least try it. And, um, and uh, you know, if you want some advice, let me know because, um, we, you know, I, I'm very conscious of the fact that I need to be the role model now. I need to convince people to, you know, do a similar jo- journey and maybe not be the CEO. I mean, it's I never thought when I started my career to be a CEO in the end, um, but but just you know enjoy life. Yeah, put yourself out there and enjoy yeah. life. I think that's a really good thing to round off with. So, thank you so much for joining the podcast. It was Welcome. amazing to have you on, uh, and also just to find out more around what it takes to be a CEO challenges, failures, and the suns and roses that go with it. (laughs) There you go. Thank you so much. Thank you.